get out our Bibles. We're talking about bringing heaven to earth. So let's go in our Bibles to Matthew 6.10. Ooh, good job, earth. Okay. 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 Matthew 6. You know what you should do? Honor God. Right? Matthew 6, 10. Matthew 6, 10. Are y'all there? Highlight it in your Bible. We're continuing next month to talk about bringing heaven to earth. We're going to talk about bringing love to earth. So this is our last kind of Sunday of heaven to earth. This word verse, we're going to have a new one on Wednesday. So we want to make sure it's in there. Who can say it without looking? Matthew 6.10. Okay, let's have Sasha and Titan. Now y'all have to say it exactly. Okay, can we get them a mic too? Stand up here on the stage. Rock, paper, scissor to see who goes first. No, you got a rock, paper, scissor for her. Okay, she's going to go first. Okay, now face the crowd. You need to cover your ears. Thank you. And you're, no, it's fine. You're going to say it verbatim. Okay? Ready, set, go. Matthew 6, 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is. Oh. Okay, Titan? She said it perfectly. Ow. That probably hurt your ears. He heard it. Yeah, you had him like fold it in. Okay. No, Ready? I, Titan, you're up. Matthew 6, 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We got two winners, guys. Good job. Give it up for Sasha. <laughs> Sasha and Titan, we'll get them a piece of candy. Actually, they can get their own candy when they go outside to the wagon. Just kidding. We'll get y'all a, a candy. All right, so Matthew 6.10, your kingdom come. Jesus was talking, and he was talking about the kingdom of God. Your kingdom come, what else? Your will be done where? On earth as it is in heaven. God wants what's going on in heaven to be going on here on earth. Why? Why does God want amazing things happening here on earth? What? He's a God of miracles. Yeah, he's, what else, Sadie? He's a what? God and man, yes. But why does God want what's happening in heaven to happen here on earth? Riley? He wants to take care of his kids. He wants his kids to have the very, very best. Do you remember in the garden, the Garden of Eden? Did he create it with a bunch of bad stuff and it was awful and there was a lot of pain? No, Adam literally walked around and named the animals right? So he could, he could go up to the crocodile. He could go up to the lion. There wasn't stickers in the ground. He walked around with no shoes. Do you understand? It was just like heaven. He created heaven on earth for us. But what happened? Adam and Eve sinned, right? They believed a lie of the enemy and they sinned. And so then what happened? Sin entered the earth. Well, is God okay with his children living in an earth that's filled with the um, punishment because of sin? No. So we sent Jesus to pay the price so we could have heaven on earth. But there's a lot of believers that just sit around with access to heaven on earth, but they never walk in it. Say, that will not be me. We're going to walk in heaven on earth. So we've been talking about the fact that heaven on earth is what? Jesus came to bring heaven to earth by first bringing what? Salvation. Salvation. And then what happened? Healing. And then what happened? Prosperity. And then Miss Candace taught us on Wednesday forgiveness. So let's look at this recap of what Miss Candace taught us this Wednesday night about forgiveness. So good. Jesus came to bring heaven to earth by bringing forgiveness. So each of us, we can accept that forgiveness just like the scripture um, she shared about the man that was paralyzed. What was the first thing that Jesus gave to him? Forgiveness, right? 
Because whenever you have unforgiveness towards you or you're even holding on to sin, it's weighty, it's heavy. Let's fill in these blanks. Go ahead and get out your paper. It says in Luke 5, 20, when he saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. Fill that out. Man, your sins are forgiven you. Jesus brought heaven to earth by bringing forgiveness. The Bible says he forgives our sins and removes them as far as the east is from the west. He does not remind you about your sins. When you humble yourself and confess your sins, what does he do? He's faithful and just to forgive. And he doesn't just forgive. What else? He forgets. He forgives and he forgets. Now, here's the thing. If you don't go to the Father and confess all, say confess all, then there's going to be room for the enemy to still weigh you down with sin. When Jesus forgives you, when you confess your sins before him, he forgives you. Then when the enemy tries to remind you, what do you do? You remind him, no, I confess that. I confess that. I, I went to God and I went to my mom and I told her that I had done that, right? So there's no reason to be paranoid. There's no reason to hide, right? I already confessed that. Yes. Why? So whenever you confess it, you receive forgiveness. And then that forgiveness frees you up. Trapped in sin weighs you down. And trapped in unforgiveness weighs you down. I don't want to be weighed down, right? I want to be free to do all that God has called me to do. Let's look at this next blank. It says this, Jesus wanted the people to know when, he ca when they came to him, they could receive forgiveness. Jesus wanted the people to know that when they came to him or he came to them, either way, they could receive forgiveness. This is what Jesus has for us. This is what God has available for us. Forgiveness. Say forgiveness. How many of y'all have ever gone to the Father and asked him to forgive you? Raise your hand. You've gone to the Father, you messed up, and you asked him to forgive you. That's everybody, right? Haven't we all messed up? Have we all asked the Father for forgiveness? What did he say whenever you went to him? I forgive you. I forgive you, period. Just like Miss Candace said, he didn't say, well, you know, you've already done this before. You've already come to me about this. You've already come to me. I can't forgive you this time. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to my room. I can't forgive you right away. Did he ever say that to you? No. Y'all, he forgives right away. Do you understand? He forgives right away. What you do with that forgiveness, guess what? That's on you. You have to choose to receive that forgiveness and then make a change. Let's go on. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all what? Unrighteousness. Unrighteousness. We have all been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But if our life does not reflect that righteousness, then we open the door for the enemy because of our unrighteousness, because of the activity of our life. The fruit we're producing is either righteous or unrighteous. Do you understand? So we set ourselves up. So wh that's why we go to him and we ask for forgiveness. You know, there's some people that preach, well, you don't have to confess your sin. You don't have to ask for forgiveness. That goes against the word of God. Whenever you mess up, we are in this earth. When you mess up, you have to go to him and confess. Why? Because that unrighteousness, it's like stains. It's like a stain. I got some, I had some white shoes in some of my luggage and one of the soaps or whatever like exploded. I don't even know what happened. There was soap, shampoo, conditioner everywhere. And so now those white shoes are like a weird color brown because the wood, it like all meld, meshed together. And so my white shoes aren't, aren't white anymore, right? They're dirty. They were white, but what happened? They came in contact with something that made them dirty. And so I'm not just going to walk around and say, well, they were white. They were white. They were white. Jesus made them white. Jesus made them white. No, they're dirty, bro. They're brown. This is what it looks like. And so I have to say, okay, these shoes are now tan and I'm going to get them clean so they can be back to white. You have to say, okay, this action, this attitude, this word, whatever I did, whatever I said, that was wrong. And yes, Jesus had made me righteous, but the activity of my life, 
just made me look dirty. And I don't want to stay dirty. I want to reflect the righteousness that he's made me. So I confess my sins. And then what? He's faithful to forgive and cleanse from unrighteousness. Now, here's the thing. When you receive forgiveness from the Father, it is up to you to do something with that forgiveness. You don't just say, okay, I'm forgiven his grace and continue doing the same thing. Just like with your parents, whenever you go to them and you say, you know what, I, I lied, I, I, didn't, I didn't really clean my room, or I didn't really do my homework, or I didn't really do this, please forgive me. What are they going to say? I forgive you. My mom would always say, I forgive you, but don't do it again. Hello, right? That's what she would say to me. And so I had a choice. I had to do something with her forgiveness. I could either make a change and not do it again, or I could say, you know what, my mom loves me. And I'm her daughter. She won't kick me out. You know, I'm in third grade. She won't kick me out. So I can do it again. And then I keep doing it over and over again. And here's the thing. Your parents will forgive you over and over again. But what are you doing? You're setting yourself up to not be blessed. Because just because God is gracious, God cannot go against his word. God cannot, cannot go against what he set in place. Do you understand? You reap what you sow. He can't change that. Just like God's not going to change gravity. Do you understand? While the earth remains, like there's going to be gravity. There's going to be summer and winter. There's going to be seed time and harvest. That's, that's already settled. That's already done. So just because you come to church and you mess up, you ask for forgiveness, you ask for forgiveness, you're still going to, you're setting yourself up. So you have to do something with that forgiveness. You have to say, you know what, God, I'm so grateful that you forgave me. I'm so grateful that I had an opportunity to humble myself before you. You are so good, God. God, I want to do something with that. I want to give that same forgiveness to other people. I want to bring that to earth. Look what it goes on to say. In order to forgive others, we have to receive forgiveness ourselves. So what is that going to require? How do I receive forgiveness from God? How do I do it? Who can tell me? How do I receive forgiveness from God? How do I receive forgiveness from God, Ellis? I have to ask him, right? I have to humble myself, confess my sins, right? And he is faithful to forgive. It doesn't just say when you mess up, just go to God and cry. Go to your mom and cry, and then you'll receive forgiveness. Y'all, tears don't receive forgiveness. What receives forgiveness? Asking. Asking, Asking but what? Receiving. But what? First John 1, 9. Put it back up. Confess. These are my confessions. Right, you got to confess it. Yeah. If you don't confess it, y'all, yes, God, God reads your, read your thoughts, but, but the enemy's not moved by your thoughts. You understand? He cannot understand your thoughts. So you think in your head, yes, I ask, I ask God to forgive me for that. That was wrong. No, you confess it. You say it. You tell somebody, hey, Channing, you know, I just had a bad attitude just now about that person. That was wrong. So I ask you to forgive me because you're my friend and you're right here next to me. That was wrong. Please forgive me. God, please forgive me. That was wrong. Why? Because once you confess it and you say like, this is who I am, that is who you are. You can't lie to yourself anymore. Once you start confessing and saying, oh gosh, okay, well, maybe I'm not, I don't have it all together. I got some bad attitudes. I got some funky thoughts towards people. This is actually who I am. When you confess who you actually are before the Father and receive his forgiveness, then you're actually empowered to change. But the longer you just act, the longer you just put on, what happens? You allow yourself to pretend. You allow yourself to fake it. What, what is it going to take for me to receive forgiveness and walk in that forgiveness? What is it going to take for me to do? Repent and confess. Confess and repent. I receive forgiveness, right? But you have to confess. Y'all, because we can become professional little church kids. Know exactly what to do. Know exactly what to say. And all the while, there's some funky, funky stuff happening behind the scenes and what? There's not going to be progress. We're not going to move. I'm not going to be better next month than I am this month not confessing. Well, I'll, I'll have to confess all day. That's okay. Because look what Jesus said. Go in your Bibles really quick to Matthew 18, 21. Y'all, God is not thrown off by your multiple confessions every day. And this is why. Look what it says. Y'all, he wants you to grow. God wants you to grow. God wants you to be all that he created you to be. Oh, I just read my Bible. Jesus, take the wheel. <sighs> it's okay. I can kind of still see those verses. Matthew. Let me go back. I got distracted by my Rift Bible. Matthew 18, 21. What was I saying? Holy Spirit. 
Holy, Holy Spirit too. Oh, he's not thrown off by all your um, confessing. He wants you to be better. He wants you to grow. He wants you to walk in all that heaven has available for you. He wants you to walk in all that he deposited on the inside of you. But guess what? You don't just walk in all of heaven living in all of hell. Living and accessing and relying on all of our, you're not going to do it. And so guess what? You come to church, you hear the word, you say, oh, you know what? I had an attitude yesterday with my mom and I didn't even correct it. I just let it ride. But once you sat down in church or you sat down in your quiet time, you realize, gosh, I don't need to have a bad attitude with my mom. I don't care what she did. I don't care what she said to me. I don't need to have a bad attitude. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to say, mom, will you please forgive me for that? God, will you also please forgive me for allowing myself to have a bad attitude? God is not thrown off if you ask for forgiveness multiple times during the day. Why? Because look what he told Peter. Peter came to him and he said, Jesus, how many times should we forgive? Matthew 18, 21. Are y'all there? Almost, almost, almost. New Bible. Pages stuck together. I get it. How many times should we forgive? Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft, how often shall my brother sin against me? Like how long do I let him sin against me and I forgive him? Seven times? <laughs> that was a good suggestion, right, Peter? How many times? Like, like seven. That seems like a lot, right? Seven times in one day. Seven times. Like if he sins against me seven times, like is that good? And so Jesus is like, okay, bro, here's what you really need to do. Look what he said. He said to him, I, I say unto you, not seven times, but until 70 times seven. 490 times. And guess how many days? One day. How many times should I forgive others? 490 times. If we were honest with ourselves and we seriously every single day confessed a bad attitude, a wrong thought, we would realize that God forgives us a lot all day. He forgives us a lot all day. If we really begin to judge ourselves, which that's what the Bible says, judge yourself lest you be judged. When we begin to judge our own behavior, our own attitudes, our own thoughts, our own conversations, when we begin to judge those, we'll realize, gosh, God is so good to me. He just forgave me and he forgave me and he forgave me. And then whenever we, we begin to, to confess and we receive that forgiveness, then we begin to make a change and it gets less and less and less. But here's the thing. God has forgiven us a bunch. So guess what we're called to do? Jesus brought heaven to earth by bringing forgiveness. Now I'm called to bring heaven to earth by forgiving other people. Well, they're just really mean to me. They just always say that same thing. Okay, forgive them. Now, am I saying still be their best friend? No, you need to have a conversation with them, right? If your best friend is constantly like talking bad about you, talking about you behind your back, you have to go to them humbly and say, hey, I love you. I want to be your friend. But I know that both of us love God and this isn't going to work in our relationship with God, us talking bad about each other or us being mad at each other. And so something's got to change. And here's the thing. Once you forgive some people, guys, the relationship might not ever be the same. And that's okay. That's okay. You and him, guess what? Always the same. You and him, always the same. Okay. But you just forgive. Well, I forgave them and now they don't want to be my friend. That's okay. You're free. See, holding on to unforgiveness is like if, um, let's say Haley did something really, really mean to me. Okay? Yes. Huh, Haley. <laughs> Haley was so mean to me. Okay? She spit on my dog. Yeah, it was rude. And then she threw poop in my house. She was mean to me. So I want to get her back. And I'm mad at her now. I'm so mad at her. So guess what unforgiveness is? My unwillingness to forgive her for doing it. Guess what it does? It's like me eating poison, but expecting her to be sick. It doesn't work. If I eat poison, who's going to be sick? You. Me. That's what unforgiveness is. It's me replaying over and over. She spit on my dog. She threw poop in my house. She spit on my dog. She threw poop in my house. She spit on my dog. Right? What is that? It's eating up your inside. Do you understand? It's eating you, literally eating like almost like leprosy, just like eating you up. 
Your heart issues begin to become your body issues. Just like Miss Candace, it weighs you down. It tears apart your body. Why? Because you weren't created like that. You were created in the image of God. And God is a God that forgives. So unforgiveness literally eats away at your body. So we have to be quick to forgive. Someone comes up to you and says, hey, I'm sorry I did that. What should you be quick to do? Forgive. forgive. If someone does something to you and they don't apologize, what should you do? Forgive. forgive. Well, I'm not forgiving them until they say they're sorry. Okay, eat the poison, bro. bro. E e eat that bad food. They're not going to get sick. You are. Do you understand? You are not their God. You're not their Holy Spirit. And you are not their judge. You are your judge. And so you have to say, you know what? That was wrong what they did. They did that and that was wrong. But I forgive them. Now, if we're talking about someone that is um, physically abusive, sexually abusive, you have to go to an adult. Do you understand? You go to a leader, no matter what they say. If they say, if you say something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurt your family. Whatever they say, it's lies. They will not hurt you. They will not hurt your family. You go to a leader and you tell them. But still, inside your heart, do you understand? That the enemy didn't just have that person do that just so that you could be twisted off, so that you could be hurt. He did that so that guess what happens? You would have unforgiveness in your heart towards them for the rest of your life and it would mess things up. And so you have to say, you know what devil? You tried to steal from me. And I'm gonna let a leader know so that they can be um, persecuted at every extent of the law. I'm not gonna be around them. I'm not gonna go around them. I'm gonna scream, I'm gonna yell, I'm gonna let the world know. Hello, do you understand? I don't care what they say. I don't care their threats. I'm going to say something about it because it's not right what they did. But in my heart, guess what? I'm going to forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them for what they, for what they did. I forgive them for what they did because I'm not going to sit around and replay what they did to me and be mad at them and be angry at them. That's not going to hurt them. Guess who it's going to hurt? It's going to hurt me. So I forgive them. Now, if you have a friend that maybe said something mean to you, and they never apologized. What do you do? Forgive. You forgive them. What does the Bible say? If someone slaps you in the cheek, turn the other cheek. Y'all, this is what the word says. Why? How many times have you slapped him in the face? And what did he do? I love you. I love you. Every person that came up to Jesus and spit in his face, what did he say? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. See, Jesus gave out such forgiveness and he never got an apology. Y'all, those soldiers didn't say, I'm sorry, Jesus, you were right. You are the son of, they didn't apologize. But see, Jesus knew if I don't forgive them, I don't get raised from the dead in three days. I don't complete what I've been sent here to complete. So I have to choose to forgive. How many times do I forgive in a day? 490 times. I just keep forgiving. Well, they just keep doing it. Stop hanging out with them. Do you understand? You got to kind of separate yourself. You're not just like, oh yeah, hit me again, hit me again, hit me again. No. If you have a conversation with them and they don't get it, then that's okay. God has another friend for you, but you forgive them. You don't go and tell that other friend, yeah, I'm not their friend anymore because they were really mean to me. Uh-uh, that's not forgiveness. Because forgiveness forgives and forgets. Let's them go. Just like Elsa, right? Are y'all ready? Let it go, let it go. Right, you got to let it go. You got, y'all, there's, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that need to hear about Jesus from you. There's a lot of people that need to see Jesus in you. And unforgiveness, what does it do? It eats away at you. It makes your heart hard. I have this ball here. Have y'all ever thrown a ball on a wall? Oh, this one might not throw. It's kind of, give me that bouncy one. I need a bouncy one. Get the bouncy one. This one's wet too. It's yeah, I'm going to use a wall ball. Have you ever played that game, though, where you hit, throw the ball? Or maybe even like a tennis ball? It's called wall ball. Okay, thank you. Wall ball. So whenever you have a ball and you throw it up against a hard surface, what usually happens? It bounces right back, right? Unforgiveness does this to our heart. It makes it hard. And so no matter what is trying to get to you, prosperity, healing, peace, joy. No matter what is trying to get in, get to you. Oh, this is a good one. Miguel, you want to come up? You have to catch it though, Miguel, okay? I want you to just throw it up against the wall. 
Notice what it did. This wall represents a hard, unforgiving heart. Whenever Miguel threw, what did it do? It came right back. See, whenever you refuse to forgive, your heart becomes hard. Jesus may be trying in a worship service, endeavoring to get you to sense and feel his love. But what happens? He throws it, and what does it do? It doesn't get through. Well, I never feel anything in church. Well, I just don't get it. I never receive anything. Check your heart. Because unforgiveness will make you hard. It will make you hard. But whenever you forgive. Now, I want you to throw that in, in this pool. Y'all, I won't even come back. Yeah. It just, it's just going to chill. Try, you want to try it again? Uh, Y'all, he's even trying to throw it hard. Like, oh, you can't do it, Miguel. So he tries to throw it. What happens? It's, it's not coming back. This is the kind of heart we should have, a soft heart. But y'all, the enemy wants us to be hard so that when someone comes across our path and they need Jesus, we're still mad about so-and-so that said we were fat or said we were ugly. Get over it. Let it go. You know what I mean? Who cares what someone says? Who cares if someone says you're fat? Who cares? Honestly, who cares? Does anybody care? No. Is God like concerned? Is God up in heaven saying, oh yeah, yeah, my kids are pretty fat. No. If God's not, I'm not going to be moved, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, they're, they, they failed that test, you know, and they, they, they're a dummy. They're a dummy. Their friend said they're a dummy. No. Let it go. You just forgive them. Why? Because what's at stake? You have a hard heart. And y'all, every time you come to hear the word, every time you get in worship, the spirit of God is endeavoring to get you something. But it's just like, do it again. What's going to happen? It's going to bounce right back. But whenever you just say, God, I receive your forgiveness for this, 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 this. And so I, I, I choose to have a heart, a, a heart that is soft, that is open to receive all that you have for me. So if someone hurts me, I don't close my heart. I don't become hard towards them. No, my heart's still open. Why? Because I can't close off my heart to people and open up the same heart to God. If it's closed off, guess what? It's closed off. So I have to stay open. And so whenever anything, the, the Spirit of God wants to speak to me. The, I want to walk in love. I, wanna, I just get it. Man, I receive it. I'm like a sponge. I just soak it up. But unforgiveness will make your heart hard. We have to forgive. What's at stake? The, the soil of my heart. The status of my heart. Well, you don't know what they did to me. You don't realize what they did to Jesus. And he still forgave. Y'all, no one's ever done that to you. Do you understand what Jesus had to go through? No one has ever done that to you. And he still forgave. So guess what? I can forgive too. Yeah, that person was wrong. And, and so I, I forgive them. I'm going to have a conversation with them. If things don't change, that's okay. The relationship might change. And that's okay. I'm going to forgive them. Well, my dad said he was going to be there and he never shows up. I forgive him. I forgive him. He can make me promise after promise. But I forgive him. I'm not going to be mad. Because guess what? Me being mad... It doesn't hurt my dad. It hurts me. My dad has his own stuff. I'm going to pray for my dad. God, I thank you that the eyes of his understanding are open. God, that he sees your love. That whatever happened to him, that made him make promises he doesn't keep. God, I thank you that you'll show it to him. You'll reveal yourself to him in a real way. Do you understand? But whenever you haven't forgiven your heart, so you can't share love, you can't receive love, you can't be all that God's called you to be.